Honorable jury members, respected audience, uh, my name is Kumar Sarwar Bhuvanshi and I am representing Oil India today. Uh, essentially, I am manager legal posted, but my theme is uh, concept based paper. The theme of my paper is a bit, bit concept based. So, the theme is joint and several twist with liability in project finance. Let me show you the brief roadmap of the presentation. First, I will be covering about the concepts in the, my paper. Then, whether the project finance is a benefit or a burden, then SPV, that is Special Purpose Vehicle, it is an isolating the risk to the parent company, then liability, whether it can become a blowout to a company, then narrow down several liability, which I am calling a BOP, which is a blowout preventer in uh, upstream oil and gas company, against infinite liability of a sponsor company. And then I will be you know, discussing a uh, few judgments of the various FX bodies followed by the conclusion. This is abstract of my presentation. We, as we understand in the recent era, the major infrastructural development projects are being done through a special purpose vehicle or through a joint venture with a group of uh, participating companies and they have a back-end agreement which we call as a joint venture agreement or a shareholders agreement. Such agreement defines the liability of each of the sponsor organization. These projects are essentially done through a major financing scheme where group of lenders participate. They lend money to the project for the construction of the project and the repayment of the liability falls upon the SPV which is a special purpose vehicle representing the financing regime. In all such uh, project financing arrangement, the primary liability always lies upon the special purpose vehicle. However, in case the SPV defaults, who will be liable? In this paper, I will be covering all these aspects of the liability. Now, let us briefly understand what is project finance. So, project finance is basically schemes and procedure of securing maximum debt for funding of a project. The repayment in the, in the, in the scheme is generally done when the project becomes operational and all the assets and rights pertaining to that SPV is being securitized or the lending organizations have their lien or mortgage over such assets. And it is mainly done in a long gestation project or for a joint venture agreement or for a collaboration arrangement. Essentially these funds are arranged through a SPV and lenders have a very limited recourse against the repayment. Next is understanding the SPV in the terms of project finance. So SPV is also known as a special purpose entity or sometimes it is also called a bankruptcy remote entity. It is created by a parent company. Parent company is essentially a main company which is having participating interest in the uh, such SPVs. Each group companies derive their benefit as well as burden in accordance with the proportionate share in their SPV. And it has a legal status of being a separate legal entity apart from the parent company. Now financing through an SPV is the theme of the presentation and obligation of the SPV is as defined under the, uh, the governing agreement. Generally what happens in the governing document, what we, the language is all the partners of the SPV will be jointly liable or it will be the partners will be jointly and severally liable. These are the two common things which we find in any agreement between the two contracting parties. Now let us understand what is liability exactly. So as per Calcutta High Court, the word liability simply means an obligation of the person and in, in its historical or etymological significance, it connotes responsibility to the limited extent. This is a simple language. In all contracts with more than two parties, the element of liability is always predefined, which is who will be liable for how much of the share. And it's like jointly, jointly and severally, severally severally, not jointly and jointly and sometimes more clarity is drawn when we say the partners will be severally liable, not jointly and not jointly and severally. So these language generally ring fence the liability of the participating sponsor. Why it is important to define the liability? The objective is to limit the scope or the risk, risk exposure of the sponsor. Now coming to the depth, I, am I have proposed in this paper the several liability which I call a diamond of the first water, which means the things are very clear. And joint and several liability I call mudding the water, which means there is a lot of ambiguity who will be liable for what. In financing regime, we understand that the major infrastructure project as I have narrated in my abstract, 
is done through billions of dollars is involved, right? Each the funding is done essentially by the group of lenders who form part of like TCAs, that is export trading agencies, multilaterals, commercial banks, and sometimes the sponsors also lend in the project. And the funding is essentially done by the done on the basis of the credit rating network and the strength of the sponsor. And sometimes lender also demand that the parent company should give a uh, guarantee in, in the form of parent company guarantee or a concessionaire guarantee. Further, lending organization would also want that their debts are contractually secured as well as provisionally maintained through the form of rights, liens and mortgage. Now, through this example, let us understand what will be the implication if the liability is joint or liability is several or liability is joint and several. In the first instance, let's say all the partners of the SPV jointly promises to pay a debt of 1 billion USD to the lenders. Interpretation says all the partners are liable to pay the debt. Nobody is defined for proportionate liability. Now, now, what if one pays? Let's say the SPV has three partners with equal share. If A pays, it reduces what others have to pay, right? And who can be sued? The lending organization can sue anybody for the repayment. Now, when the liability becomes several, each partner separately promises to pay its proportionate share of debt. Let's say A, B, C, D are the partners in a SPV. A has 40% share, B has 30, C has 20, and D has 10%. So each partner will have just their share of proportion, right? Uh, right? The exposure is according to their proportionate liability. Interpretation says each partner is liable for their share of debt only. They need not to bother about other shares. And if either of the partner pays, let's say I am liable for 10%, I pay 10%, then I am not liable for the 90%. It is upon the lending organization to take the uh, action against them. Who can be sued? If I am not paying 10% of my share, then I can be sued only for the 10%. Right? Now, if the liability is joint and several, several, which I have said it is muddying the water, making the things ambiguous, all the partners of the SPV jointly promises to pay the debt of 1 billion USD. And A promises to pay 1 billion USD, B promises to pay 1 billion USD, C and D, everybody promises to pay 1 billion USD. Interpretation is all partners are equally liable for 1 billion USD despite their proportionate share in the special purpose venture. And if A pays, it reduces what others has to pay. Let's say A pays 10%. The lending organization case can sue other three partners for the entire 90%. Also, A can be also involved in the 90%. Who can be sued? All of them can be sued together and lenders have liberty to sue either of the partners or partners. Now the question is, how lender will determine who has, who has to be sued? I will be covering this in the subsequent slides. Now let us understand through different judgments. I have quoted around three judgments here. This is of the Commissioner Cent CGST, Central Excise in Jodhpur. The operating para of the judgment I have quoted here. It, it says in the present, the court has observed, the present in the present factual matters of the appellant, the government of India entered into a PSC, which is production clearing contract, with each of the contracting parties, respectively. The contracting parties have also not been referred as a joint venture. They all participated individually in the PSC. The parties are not acting agents as agents of each other. Further, PSC provides that the liability of the contracting parties will be several and not joint or joint and several. See the implication of this language in the agreement, which made each party independently liable for its acts and separately proceeding against each other. This is the one classic example of de defining the liability. Second one is the cases of IVRCL Infrastructures and Projects Limited versus CC. In this case, the tribunal, while making the JV jointly and severally liable, applied the partnership character and made each of the partners jointly liable. Because part, in, in, as per the Partnership Act 1932, the partners are jointly liable for the debts under the partnership deal. Now the third case is of Matri Toshi versus Anand Rati Global Finance Limited. In this case, there the National Company Law Act Tribunal, while examining the agreement, observed the documents executed between the parties, the perusal of the documents shows that measures this and this were co-borrowers and promised to pay back the loan with interest. Their liability to pay joint and several liability. And accordingly, their liability, the lender's organization can have a you know, liberty to sue any of them. Now, 
According to Clayton Woods, so Clayton Woods is basically an Australian law firm which has expertise in energy and domestic uh, uh, in international arbitration. They have highlighted how lending organization will see who has to be uh, who has to be made obliged for joint and several liability. They have quoted it can be more effective to pick the best party to sue. The party who, who is easy to locate, the party who has the, the deeper pocket who can pay back the debt, that party lender will choose. So to minimize the risk of our sponsors, we have to determine the liability and define it very crystal clear. I will uh, move into my conclusion. The first thing is, in any agreement, we have to define the terms in a very crystal language. There should not be any scope of interpretation. The third is, the second one is intent as well as content of the contractual agreement plays a vital role. Then, ensure, the liability should always be ring fenced. It should not be open-ended scope. Last is ensure always ensure that the participation in such project is done through a consortium or a SPV and not as a partnership or an association of person against whom the law determines the joint and several liability. With this, uh, my presentation is complete. Thank you so much. Hello, yeah. Very good presentation and uh, Ramvansi, uh, you try to uh, connect your legal with the finance. Possibly you try to touch your legal part and uh, try to assimilate that. But I have uh, it is a nice concept, I like it. But how doable is a question, right? So, few things I would like to ask from you. Any agreement, whether it is SPV or any type of agreement is there, it depends between the partners, between the terms and conditions which are agreeable. And terms and conditions of the bankers who are going to lend it. So liability will only create based on mutual terms and conditions. It will not come like that. Uh, this has to be the terms and conditions of the contract or terms and conditions of the agreement, whatever is there. So how you are going to, I have two questions to ask from you. How you are very firm that whatever you are stating for creation or for understanding, that has to be followed by the then the, who, are, who are going to have the agreement, whatever uh, forms of agreement, and then by the bankers also. Second, how this presentation is related to the finance? So these are the two questions I would like. Sir, so, uh, let me first address the second question, how it is related to finance. Because if the nature of liability is not defined very crystal clear, it has a huge financial implication on the sponsors, right? Because the sponsors are the person who are investing in the project based on their debt and equity ratio, whatever the arrangement has been done. And in, in, any, you know, ambiguity in the language can have a financial implication on the sponsor at a very broad level since the mega efforts uh, the projects are developed at a very big level involving huge amount of money. Like based on my experience, I have worked in a Mozambique energy project where the lender secured 14.9 USD, billion USD, which runs around like more than 1 lakh crore rupees. So if I am liable for 10% and I am not defining the liability very, you know, in a very crystal clear language, in such case, and any ambiguity can make me exposed to greater risk. The these, are, these are the legal terms and conditions which are to be agreed. Right. How that that liability will generate through the terms and conditions. So that obviously is a is a is a uh, is a uh, job of the persons who are going to form the agreement. How uh, that then it will come. So you are giving some advice that these these are to be followed. That is a that is a uh, thing may not be followed may be followed. So how these are related to the finance? I am clear to understand. Yeah, actually it is not touching the tenors and you know, spirits of the financial, uh, financials, but it is it has an indirect relationship with that also. Because let us say if we are getting uh, into project finance through an SPV, 
there are implications on the balance sheet of the sponsors as well as on the SPV, right? The, the, the debts are shown in the SPV balance sheet and it doesn't affect the balance sheet of the sponsors when we go through financing through a special purpose vehicles. So in, in different ways, it's touching the you know, tenor and tone of the financials also. As far as your second or first question is concerned with respect to how it can be implemented. Again, what I have experienced while you know, entering into the Mozambique energy financing, we understand that the lenders always want a comfort. When the library, when in the initial term sheet, the library was joint in several and we brought it to several and not joint in several. How we achieved that, it was based on the comfort which we gave. We ensured the multi-layer protection against their debt, which was in the form of the parent company guarantee. Then we have a term called debt service undertaking. And again, we gave rights and privileges, liens over the rights of the SPV and uh, entire project assets. So based on the mutual negotiation, win-win situation was created. And then the lenders agreed to this situation. Okay. You have questions? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Rohan, this is a, a good presentation. Yeah, and you, when you started, you said uh, it's a conceptual paper, right? So correct, it's, uh, it's like a conceptual paper. What I see is lacking is, uh, you know, uh, given the interpretation of the various concepts and there I've taken some international experiences as well as I've taken some of the experiences actually in India. What I see is, uh, what is the confusion? What is your suggestion? See, based on this, uh, we, which has not come out very clearly in your presentation, so what would you like to obtain for this to be done? The change in this, why? Sir, essentially, there are around seven number of conclusions. Yeah, but but conclusion is, what's your suggestion? Yeah, suggestion, Sorry. the one suggestion which I propose here is that whenever you are entering into any financing arrangement, yeah. don't enter as a sponsor directly. Enter through a special purpose vehicle, that is, you create an SPV, you own the interest in that SPV and then approach to the financing. How it is beneficial to us? If you are entering as a sponsor, you will have you will incur joint as well as separate liability. But in case you are entering through an SPV, which has a separate agreement to govern the relation obligation rights between the SPV, you will define that the rights are joint or several or whatever language you choose. Against that backdrop, the court will interpret that. The how that is how I quoted the judgment of the GST and NCLAT, where the liability in the joint venture agreement was mentioned that each partner will be severally liable for their obligation and not jointly and severally. Against that interpretation, only the partner will be only liable to their share of proportion. This is the first suggestion. Second was that you, when you are making the language, when you are coming to a negotiation or drafting of the uh, agreement, you have to, because as we experience, based on my you know four year experience in uh, legal sector in oil and gas industry, there is a lot of ambiguity in the contractual provisions. And what I believe why those, those things happen is that major focus is always for a finance person or for a technical person is to secure minimum funding. But at the same time, other things are ignored. The person will not you know focus who is liable for what. I am entitled to get maximum funding. Like we, we, we you know, with this while in our project, other projects also. So for a legal person, his focus will be how much my sponsor is exposed, right? But for a finance person, his major, you know, concern will be how much debt I can secure. So in that way, you know, multiple ambiguity arises. So it has to be always, you know, vetted through a legal department of the company or through an external legal advisor who can, you know, guide on these subjects. True. So that's what I'm saying. That was not coming out. So uh, the recommendations, suggestions based on that. Second thing, what could uh, enhance at this enrich your uh, the paper is? Uh, one aspect is what are you just mixing up both the things? One is uh, in terms of the legal law, whether is there any actual change because of this? Is there any need of, of changing the law or the uh, definition of it? Or other aspect is the drafting part of it. Drafting part is not necessary at this though, suggesting for the change in the law. Right? When it comes to drafting the contract, that at, at, if you come out all these suggestions very specifically first, so what is after your analysis, benchmarking as well as the experience, so what is your recommendation suggestion so far is the law and the legal aspect is concerned if there is any change in that required. And second is the what changes required is the drafting of the, the contract. Yeah. Law is always, you know, as far as commercial transactions are you know, uh, concerned, the law gives full autonomy to the parties to draft the terms as they want. Like the Partnership Act says, the partners will be jointly liable, subject to the contract. Right. If you in a contract you have mentioned, in a partnership deal, if you have mentioned, 
each partner will be severally liable, then the agreement will prevail, not the law will prevail. Because, so in all contract, contract or commercial transaction, there is autonomy on the party to choose to dictate the terms which is comfortable to both the parties. So we have to come to that win-win situation. All right, thank you. Thank you very much.